My name's Gordon Maloney, I'm an activist with Living Rent, which is a tenants union in Scotland. I guess I came to the conference because I really feel that there's something happening uh, all across Europe. I find it really interesting that basically in every country in Europe there are, there are relatively new young groups campaigning around housing issues and I'm really interested in the way we can link those struggles up and, and learn from each other. Um, I think the kind of historically there's been a there's been a history and a heritage of housing activism, but but not not loads in the last um, it, recently until until the last couple of years, um, and I think there's a huge value in us building those bridges and building those links, um, both because a lot of the enemies we're fighting are the same. Um, it's the same vulture funds, it's the same banks all over Europe and, and, and further, but also because I think um, we're, uh, lots of the groups are young and are new and are, um, we've got a lot to learn from each other and I think the value of a, a Europe-wide tenants movement and, and further than Europe um, is potentially huge and transformative. <laughs> Living Rent does lots of things. Um, we're, a, we're a union for tenants um, in Scotland. And so we do, I guess, kind of three areas of work. One is around what we call member defence. So that's when a member comes to us with an issue where their landlord, for example, is refusing to make repairs or they're increasing rent or they're facing eviction. Um, and we take an approach to those kinds of issues that is to treat them as collective issues. And I guess what normally happens um, is landlords or letting agents treat these kinds of disputes between a tenant and their landlord as individual private disputes between kind of signatories to a contract and that's of course not the case they're they're structural and they're systematic and our approach to these these individual disputes is rather than to support someone to write a legal letter to to approach it as a movement and, and bring dozens of people to, to the meetings with the letting agent. We find that not only is it more effective, not only do we win almost every case we touch, um, and not only do we get better results for our members by approaching it in that way, but that our approach is to take, we want our organization and the standing of tenants to be stronger at the end of every single case. I guess we start from a position that there's an imbalance in power between tenants and landlords. And we want everything we do after, at the end of every action, that imbalance to be a little bit a little bit smaller. So we do a lot of that. We also do a lot of much more, uh, much more collective organizing in, in, in a number of kind of particularly deprived areas. Um, we're doing a big piece of work in an area of, Scotland, of Edinburgh called Muir House, which is a series of council flats that are really run down, you're talking, um, you know, leaks with like water flowing onto people's pillows in their bed, flats so cold that they've had to move every person in the building, in the, in the home, into one room because that's all they can afford to heat. Um, damp, mould, mushrooms, even asbestos in, in some of the flats. Um, and um, we've been building a, a, a massive campaign there and we just actually recently forced the council to admit that they're a slum landlord. Um, and to commit a big, a massive investigation into the conditions there. And I guess the last piece of work we do is around legislative change. Um, so we've been long campaigning for the reintroduction of rent controls. Um, almost every other country in Europe has better protections in terms of how much a landlord can increase rent by um, year on year. And in Scotland, it's a free-for-all. And what you find is year on year, rents go up faster than inflation, faster than people's wages, and tenants are pushed further and further into poverty, into homelessness, into really dire situations. We hear stories of women who can't leave abusive relationships, parents who can't feed their children, kids, uh, you know, young, young people trying to make a life, having to choose between heating their home in the bitter cold or feeding themselves. These aren't choices or situations anyone should, should find themselves confronting. So we want um, fair, secure, affordable, safe housing for everyone in Scotland. And 
Until the government do that, our movement's going to keep growing. And just last year, um, there was a fire in Grenfell Tower, a block of council flats in, in London, where um, the residents in this building had been warning for years and years and years that the building wasn't safe, that there were the, the fire regulations weren't good enough, the sprinkler, they didn't have sprinklers installed, the fire alarms didn't work. And just over a year ago, the building burnt down and 72 people in, in one of the richest bar in, a, in, in some of the poorest people in the country, but in one of the richest boroughs in, in, in not just in London, but in the world, burned to death in their beds, 72 people, because the government time and time again had ignored their warnings. And the thing that for me encapsulates it all was an interview that one of the councillors, one of the, the city councillors in Kensington where, where Grenfell Tower happened, an interview he gave the next day. And the interviewer asked him, uh, did you never get complaints from these tenants? Did they never raise issues? And his response was, yeah, well, you always get complaints from those kinds of tenants. And for me, it just exposes the, the disdain and, and even hatred that these people have for us. And, and it demonstrates to me beyond any doubt that any route, any approach to changing the situation for tenants that relies on the goodwill of people like that or them seeing the error in their ways and resolving issues for us is doomed to failure. And that's why we're building not just a big campaign, but uh, an infrastructure and an organization and a union of tenants so that we can not only kick people like that out and get better people in, but force whoever's in power in councils or in government to act um, in, in our interests. <laughs> Uh, just over a hundred years ago, in, in starting in, in Scotland, in Glasgow, um, a huge wave of rent strikes brought the entire country to its knees. Um, landlords were tripling rents and, and um, women's defence committees sprung up across Scotland and then spread across the rest of the country. And it, in the end, it posed such a threat to the government, to the war effort, that um, the, the government at the time, this was, this was a conservative government, um, froze rents. Um, and, and from then, for 60, 70 years, we had rent controls. And so I guess our message is this, that if the government doesn't step in and regulate rents and bring them down and ensure affordable housing for people, then we'll do it ourselves. So they can do it from above through regulation and better protections, or we can do it from below through collective action and rent strikes if we have to. <laughs>